So these are the things that I've realized I need to learn from so that I can be better in the next season. Hey everyone, welcome to Starting on the Bench. It's a podcast about sports culture and news related content that strives to focus on learning from the bench. And today we're going to be talking about becoming the greatest in fantasy football. Right off the bat, it just felt weird hearing grown men talk about fantasy football, discussing points and blaming athletes for not giving their best. It was one of the one of those weird parties that I decided to go in and all the group, all the men were sitting together and talking about it. You know, what I hated the most was when I claimed when they claimed that it's their team and we did great this week. And you know, who who's we? They played, you just had a imaginary application that kept the scores of the actual athletes doing their job. You know, why are you including yourself into this? You're the guy who came in with socks and sandals to a dinner party. Like who are you? And then my friend who's a professional basketball player in Europe asked me to to be a part of it, to join one of his uh fantasy teams, fantasy leagues, and so I said it's you know I really don't want to do it because I've seen people get rage and I've seen people do stupid things and you know this socks and sandals kind of guys like I don't want to be associated with them but he said it's not complicated just go ahead and try and see how it is and you know you have to understand something here like I grew up watching boxing so I love strategy strategy anything that involves strategy I'm all down for it so I watch hockey because there's a game plan involved and obviously there are team related sports that includes strategy and probably the majority of them do it just but I felt like boxing it's more about the mindset and how you're gonna throw punches and all that but then I realized that you can actually in in football in American football you are actually invested in counting how many plays who's going to be doing what and offense defense there's like there's so many things involved that's why I started following uh football and so Later on, I realized that, you know, apparently there's a bit of it, not just a strategy involved um, during the game, but before the game. Like, what are the things they have to do? And I've come up with five things that I've learned so far that kind of pushed me to become a better, uh, I guess, participant in a fantasy league. But something that uh, put me aside from everybody else, because there was this competitive league that I was in where you kind of have to like make sure you make adjustments every single day and not just, you know, the game before in order to make sure that you get, uh, you know, the prize at the end. <laughs> I'm going to leave it at that. To those who don't like participating in fantasy leagues, don't, you know, don't. But if but find a friend who actually enjoys it and doesn't say we in a reference in in reference to a team. Obviously, I really enjoy it. It's it's something that uh, sparks my joy at for 17 weeks out of the year. This is something I'm looking forward to. I don't get overly excited or spend my nights looking searching for the right key players, but I really enjoy it cuz I get to talk to my friends about it. This is something that uh, kind of makes me even more interested in watching games. I do enjoy watching games. I try to try to uh, as much as possible obviously living in Europe is kind of challenging to keep up with a with a schedule usually if there's a Monday night football then that means it's at 2 30 a.m on a Tuesday or 3 30 so I'm like I'm I'm in the middle of my sleep I can't just wake up and watch the game obviously I catch something up later I watch it during the week record it or whatever so I definitely started enjoying it because I've been a huge I guess Bill Belichick fan. I feel like there's a lot of people involved. Like, <laughs> there's a lot of people who are into Bill in the most heterosexual way. I'll put it right there. So, I researched so much trying to figure out how to actually play the game, how to, you know, manage, uh, set expectations. If I do say so myself, there's a if there's a player that I wanted to get and he's not available, like how do I apparently trading and all that. So how do I do that? Then I started researching a lot, and I'm like, oh, man, I'm I feel like <laughs> I feel like Bill, and that's why I named myself Moneyball Bill. So Moneyball is because of the movie where, uh, obviously, you know, Jonah Hill and Brad Pitt were. Andy Sorkin actually wrote the movie, so whenever 
whenever Moneyball, right? So Brad Pitt is like he's a he's a, a baseball fan. He knows sports, but then you have Jonah Hill, who's like statistics prove everything. Like don't focus on the character of the person, but the statistics. So I'm like, okay, I some I don't even know some of the players on the uh, on the teams, and I know I've I've been following the Cowboys, but every other team's like I don't I don't really care. Like whatever you say, I'm not really paying attention. So whenever I watch Moneyball, I'm like, okay, hold on. I think I can do this. So I started researching, looking at the stats first before actually figuring out who the guy is. And it did help. Uh, my friend invited me to uh, week four or week five uh, into the league to take over some, some guy who decided not to be a part of it anymore. And so I was one in four. I lost four games. Well, I didn't. But the guy lost four games. He only won one. And I figure out how he won that one because I was like, how did he win one if he lost four? And he's like, I just auto-generated during the draft and then somehow another play did the same thing. So he just won by like one or two points. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is terrible. And so I decided to like, you know what, well, whatever. So I ended up with 7-9 record or 7-8, uh, 7-9 record. Yeah. So I lost a bunch of games in the beginning because they didn't know who. I drafted a uh, Daddy Baker. That was his first season playing. And then I decided to, you know what? It's it's going to be good. It's going to be good. It's going to be definitely good. So the five things that I've learned over the past couple of seasons that apparently, I mean, this is just funny. And I'm, I'm sure you're going to have a laugh about it. But if, if you've been a huge fantasy league fan or you've been a part of it, I know some some people actually have two, three, four, five fantasy leagues, which is crazy. I feel like if you have more than two, there's no point of having it because your uh, your players are going to overlap somehow. However, the friend that I talked to about trying to figure out how to improve, his, he's been playing fantasy for the past two decades, 20 years, ever since like early 2000s, late 1900s. <laughs> early 2000s. And I'm like, oh my goodness, how can you... It, this has to be challenging, but then... He's a guy that, you know, uh, plays bats. And then he introduced me to uh, fantasy playoffs and fantasy f uh, Super Bowl, which is mind-blowing. I feel like this is part betting, part luck of trying to figure out who's going to be who. But then I'm like, you know what? This is dope. I really, I really enjoy it because apparently it's a guessing game, obviously, because you have to, you know, rely on luck and figure out who's going to be healthy, who's going to be injured. But then, for instance, last year in 2019, the uh, Super Bowl 2020, right? And everybody's like, definitely the Ravens have to be there, and somehow the the 49ers. I definitely had them in the in the Super Bowl because I thought, you know what? They're they're definitely going to do it. But it didn't turn out to be that way, obviously. Uh, Ravens somehow lost. Uh, 49ers definitely made it through. And then I'm like, you know what? Maybe I should research fantasy as well. So there are five things that I wrote down that I want. <laughs> it's just, oh man, even looking at them feels embarrassing. Anyway, so so number one is don't dra draft QB in the fourth, fifth, on a sixth round. Somehow I didn't know that. Somehow, <laughs> oh god. Somehow I drafted Patrick Mahomes. I was the first one to I was I was the first one to draft one pick one. There you go. God. I'm I drafted Patrick Mahomes in my first one. And I swear, I the, the amount of trash talking and people judging me for the next five rounds is just overwhelming. I oh my goodness. I was just embarrassed because I'm like, nobody nobody's Nobody want, I, I don't want anybody to take him. Like he's such a he's he's one of my favorite quarterbacks. Uh, I mean obviously watching him play Baker in college was something that I'm like, "Oh my goodness, this is if they ended up if they end up being in the NFL, this would be amazing." And they did. It was just so fun to watch. And so I drafted him in the first round. Apparently, you know, running backs go a long way. Wide receivers go a long way. You have to figure out who's going to get you points. Uh, figure out, you know, watching the the sportsmanship in a team. How many how many yards, how many carries they have. For instance, sometimes I had to choose between two wide receivers and I didn't know who to choose. And then one of them got, uh, oh, it was Odell Beckham Jr. versus um, Julian Edelman. So I'm like, you know what, I'm going to put um, Odell because I feel like he's he gets more uh, yards, 
But then I realized that, you know what, Edelman has more carries, so I have to put him. And I did. And, you know, I, Odell would get like four points and Edelman would get like 12, 13, 15 points or something like that. Between 11 and 15, that's that's my average. So I try to uh, I try to get Edelman every now and then. And unfortunately, Tom Brady's not there, so we'll see. This My idea of a league is going to be disrupted, so I have to figure out how to do it. So, yeah, I had Mahomes and uh, Johnny Garoppolo, Jimmy Garoppolo on the roster, but um, Mahomes gave me 28, 30 points, something like that on average, and Jimmy got me only 7 because he didn't <laughs> – he didn't throw the ball. He just passed it on to to their uh, to their running back. So that was something that was something definitely to learn about. I I don't know. It was just frustrating because I felt like I definitely can do more, but then I didn't. So make sure that you don't draft any QBs in the first round or second or third round, but go fourth to sixth. Uh, they obviously change up, and whoever you draft in the beginning sometimes can be a deceiving. But Mahomes, I th- he was definitely good for me for the first. 12 we- 11 weeks but then he had a week uh bye week and then he injured his I can't remember what it was either his knee or his elbow and so that he was gone for a little bit so I never changed him so fortunately I need to make sure that I draft really good running backs and wide receivers I'm really leaning towards getting Edelman and I think I would get uh who else who else Julio Jones, if he's still available, I kind of want him because obviously Matt Ryan always passes to him. They, I don't remember them getting enough weapons in the wide receiver section. So we'll see. Point number two, take what you need. I am a person that like I need to get everybody as good as possible. However, I realize that I can't have five, five wide receivers, one running back, I terrible defense and one QB that is a backup quarterback I don't think I can do that however I realized that best players got to be taken first that's what I thought that is necessary so after drafting Mahomes I knew that I needed a decent defense and the and a kicker so that's what I did for some reason this is so embarrassing for some reason I had San Francisco on my defense and then I had a good kicker and I can't remember uh, who the kicker was that's that's how good he was that's right but I had him in the in the first couple of rounds so that was a terrible thing to do however thankfully some people were generous enough and other players just were injured or thrown in the IR and so uh, thrown on the bench so thankfully I realized that you know what I really need to figure out how to draw how to get the players that I need instead of the players that are on top. And so I realized that I shouldn't go quarterback, defense, and kicker. I need to figure out other teams, flags, and all that. So I need to figure out who's actually pretty, who's actually decent at, at this point. So I'm, I'm thinking of getting definitely getting the running backs first. But take what you need. I realized that I wanted to make sure that I would get as many good players as possible so that others won't have a chance to have them and that was a terrible idea because obviously I didn't uh oh man so embarrassing I I didn't have anybody on my defense afterwards because I got as many wide receivers as possible then I got running backs and then I didn't have any wide receivers and so I kept on jumping from one place to another trying to figure out Okay, in two weeks, I know it's going to be a bye week, so I want to get as many good kickers as possible. So my whole bench was just filled with people that I don't necessarily need to, but I know that other people would want to have it or trade it. And so I need to make sure that they don't have it at least. So point number two, take what you need and don't don't worry about what others don't have or they have. Just make sure that you have everybody who you need on the team don't don't stress about it point number three is read the news during preseason I don't think I've paid attention that much because I I I, again I couldn't care less but then apparently I had to is that some of the players that I drafted uh because we had the we had a draft two weeks before the season started and so two weeks in the preseason I'm like I don't necessarily care so I drafted whoever was there but then I drafted a player who was out and I didn't pay attention. And so I, I missed an opportunity to get a good running back because I picked somebody 
who isn't who's who isn't even playing. He's gonna be gone for for the first six weeks. It was a tight end. I realize that I mostly read NFL news and there's and, and you know news about the trades and who's going to which team, free agency. But there are real fantasy websites to go to and read up on how everybody's doing. And it took me a couple of weeks in the season to realize that there are actually websites dedicated to fantasy. And I, I get some ESPN notifications that. Uh, you know, that sometimes I have to pick and choose who I need to read and who I need to move before the game started during the week, like Thursday and Friday to figure out, or like Wednesday, Thursday and Friday to figure out who's actual playing. And then I need to read who is actually playing and who's injured, who's on the bench and all that. So I felt so dumb when I discovered it. And I thought, man, I'm going to Bill Belichick this league up. But it turns out that I have a lot to learn, a lot to read up, and a lot of things to figure it out before the before the game started. Not five, ten minutes before, but maybe like spend extra minutes during the week so I don't cramp up all the all the stuff during the week and figure out who's actually who do I need in the next in the next time. I need to figure out whenever I change whenever my roster is on by week, how do I get good players for that time, for that week, and then drop them without losing a significant amount of players? Because I think at one point in week 10, I had maybe four or five players being on by. So I had no idea how to do it. I was like, I need at least some kind of trashy player who will get me one or two or three points or something like that instead of just leaving one guy and getting zero points so this that was something that's important for me to realize that you know what sometimes i have to sacrifice those really good kickers <laughs> or or defense in order to get uh, uh potentially points for that week in order to not suffocate or not suffer and so i realized you know what i'm still belichick in this i'm still a bill belichick in this league i still can figure it out how to play how to do how to move so all of that and I think that in the future I'll realize that you know what it's about it's about a teamwork it's about figuring out and not being afraid to ask some people you know what I'm in this league I know that this this and this person isn't isn't playing so who do I who do I play in who do I substitute who do I just throw out off my team and then I realized those websites actually help they figure out they kind of give you a mock draft of who and how you're going to be doing stuff how your team is going to look like, what are the average points, because uh, ESPN Fantasy, it is a good one where it gives you a predict predictions and all that, but it's not as good as the team. So point number four, be in the right league. I cannot stress this enough of how irritated I get when I would play somebody who's actually good. I would get like 93 points, that person will get 120 I'm frustrated because I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I was number one, now I'm, I'm number two. But then you get two players who don't necessarily care, they don't even participate, half their bench is active and their roster is in, they're in bye week. And the one would get 30 points and another would get like 52 points. And then they would move on to a position number two or three and then I would be stuck at wherever I am. And I would be like losing to a team that didn't even try their best. So my record would be, let's say, it would be 3-1. And the reason why I got one is because some other team got a better league because they're 4-0 because they played for two weeks straight. They played against people who didn't move their players. Some of them are in bye week or injured or whatever. So it's not fair that in the league where the commissioner isn't paying attention and kind of like letting other people buy, and especially if there's money involved, you know, you got 100, 200, uh, you know, as a buy-in, I guess, and to enter a league, you pay a hundred and two hundred dollars. Then you notice that these players aren't really paying attention. But if there's money involved, they obviously going to be updating to win. But at the same time, it's just so frustrating that I'm like, I can't, I can't play. I can't be my best because some other guy on the other side of the planet or even like around the neighborhood they're not really updating their roster and so it's just frustrating that not being in the right league obviously another point to that is that i want to be a part of the league w with friends so i can discuss different players trash talk and it's, it's just one of the best things ever i know i want to create a new one just on social media where i don't have anybody participating with me well i want to create a league that i know 
people don't know me, but we're kind of like low-key friends, kind of like one of those Facebook friends or something like that, to create a fantasy team where you don't know them, but you can actually play with them. So I want to have like two or three leagues just to learn more and more about it. And plus, I'm curious how to how to how to have different players on the team and still win. Not necessarily having the same roster, but different teams. Some people you would be playing against, and some people will be actually helping you out learn where exactly you need to improve on. So that's something I want to do. And then obviously with friends who are going to be playing together, because I enjoy playing with my best friend. So, so we talk about it literally every day, trying to figure out all of the memes. Instagram is through the roof. We don't necessarily talk every day. We just send memes to each other, different football uh, stuff related, sports related stuff. So it's always fun. But make sure you're in the right league, the right people, the right commissioner, and a, a good atmosphere. Good vibes overall, you know. And the fifth and the last one is don't stress about it. I stressed I got so mad in the first couple weeks because I didn't understand it. And some people cheated, actually. They had it in with a commit. No, no, no. I have no idea if they cheated. I don't know if you can cheat. But it was just frustrating because I didn't know how to how to navigate through ESPN Fantasy Football. I didn't know that there are websites. I didn't know that you can't, you can't dr- uh, draft a quarterback in the first. Like, you shouldn't do it. There are so many YouTube videos of real men, grow men, smash their TVs, uh, get upset, start yelling at their wives, kids. Uh, there's, there's this compilation that I actually watched it before starting this because I wanted to see if it's funny or not. There are people who, like, their kids are afraid of their dads because every single Sunday they watch games, they watch, somehow it's always the Vikings or the Steelers. There's nothing in between, the Vikings and the Steelers. The 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 Chargers are not going to be upset if their team doesn't perform well. They're like, yeah, we'll expect that. So it's just so funny how, like, you get so obsessed about it, overwhelmed with figuring out how to make, how to make your best fantasy setup possible but then when you watch the game when you like you watch the game because you want to enjoy the game you don't watch the game because you need to win the win the points and so it's just so ridiculous to watch them freak out lose their minds <laughs> I, I i know i should not be laughing about this because i'm telling you that one video of this steelers fan just smashing tv yanking the cord from the wall from the wall plug and then, like their their kids are like, "Oh my gosh, mom, mom, go and watch, like look look for the dad because he's freaking out. He's outside with the TV." And oh my goodness, just so so weird. I'm like, "What are you doing, man? You're a grown ass man. Why are you so like this? This is not fun." And so sometimes I notice myself being frustrated with it, like, oh, "I'm watching a game. I'm enjoying the game, but then I'm looking at points and I'm losing to somebody who who has two guys on by." And so I am like, come on, man, you can do this. Somehow it ends up being 76, 77. I lose by one point. I'm frustrated. And I'm like, you know what? I watched the game. I enjoyed the game. My team won. It was fun. It's still 8-8. Eight, eight. <laughs> but it's just it's just frustrating to see other, other people get so obsessed over games that you you don't even participate. That's why that's why I hated fantasy football in the first place. When I saw people say like, "We all my team won," like, "Oh, we did great last week." I'm like, "Yeah, you, you didn't play. This is this is not you. You weren't even close to the team. You're not in the, even on the field. You're not. You're watching at home with I don't know yelling at your kids, I guess. But it was just so funny how it's like, dude, come on, man. Just obviously it's fun to watch, fun to keep up, and it's. Fun to talk to your friends about it, but freaking out and then spending hours upon hours planning your week. I'm like, this this isn't fun. This is stupid. You're stressing about something virtual. And I'm like, come on, man. Come on. Anyway, so these are the five things that I've realized that I need to pay attention in the future. I really need to make sure that I'm better than last year. And again, it's just for me, it's a strategy. Obviously, my name's Moneyball Bill. I don't know, maybe I should change the name, but it's just something that's fun. It's something that I realize is it's fun for me to keep up, fun for me to watch, and fun for me to talk to my friends about it. So these are the things that I've realized. 
I need to learn from so that I can be better in the next season. I hope we're still going to be doing. I'll be participating in three uh, three leagues. I will be participating in two leagues. And then the third one is going to be created with a bunch of strangers. So it's going to be exciting. I think that I'm going to do a few other podcasts on fantasy and another episode if, or so uh, on here as well. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Thank you for listening on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate you. Views are getting up. That's amazing. Wherever you get your podcasts, thanks for listening. Thanks for following us on Instagram at Starting on the Bench. Obviously, because you know we post daily content especially on stories and we try to post as much as possible one post a day on instagram that's been it hope you're staying hydrated and healthy all right i'm out peace